Hello everyone, it's GigaBeef here, and today we have three suppressed weapon builds pre-flea market using level 1 traders only. In fact, these are the only three that you can do without looting or getting to level 14, which is where it's technically possible to get Peacekeeper 2. The first is the TT pistol, the second is the VPO 209, and the third is the VPO 215. So first off, we're going to look at the TT pistol. This is definitely not one of my favorite weapons in the entire game, especially not in terms of pistols, but you can buy it here from Prapple 1 at 8,194 rubles. Now the trick with this is that at first, it looks like you can't really do anything with this weapon. Even if you open out to all here, you can see that there is the TT makeshift sound suppressor. So how do we actually get this on the weapon? So firstly, what we're going to do is we're going to use the edit preset system, just because this makes it so much easier. You need your workbench at level one before you can use this system, but it makes it so much easier to visualize exactly how you can change the guns and do the various bits of modding. So we're gonna use this throughout the video because it's so, so handy. So as I said, what you'll notice is that you can't really do anything with this gun at the beginning, but the trick is there are two different barrels. So there is a gilded barrel, which comes from one of the bosses, which isn't that useful here, but there's a 121 millimeter threaded barrel. And when we add that, we can see that a small threaded section appears on the end of the muzzle. And then when we click into this one here, we then can attach the TT suppressor. So this is really how you get a suppressor on the TT. It's very, very easy. You just need to swap the barrel over. Now I am aware that some people like using this pistol for quests like Punisher Part 2 or just going real sneaky and killing scouts without other players knowing where they are, but you might be able to immediately see the problem with using this particular setup, which is that you can't actually see over the front post because the suppressor is too big and is wider than the actual muzzle and the barrel and the end point of the gun, so you can't see over and use the iron sights, which makes it a little bit difficult to use. There is a little something that we can do about that, we'll look in a moment, but firstly let's just go into find parts to see how much this is going to set us back. So we don't need the magazine because it comes with one, obviously you might want to buy one or two more, but the barrel, the pistol and the suppressor together, this is coming from the flea market, so if we go to traders only, then it's going to cost us 28,000, let's get rid of this, it's going to cost us 26,783, excluding the barrel, to buy it all from Prapple, which you can get it all from Prapple 1, so this is actually one of the cheapest suppressed builds in the entire game, partly because it's a pistol, but 26,000, most suppressors cost more than this on their own. So, what are we going to do about this, given that we can't use the iron sights well? And mechanic one, there is something that you can use called the TT Precision, which is actually a laser dot. What this means is that if you attach this, you can then turn the laser on and you can use that to do your targeting rather than using ADS because it's very difficult if you're aiming down sights when you can't see down the sights at all. There are also one more thing that you can do. There's nothing you can do with magazines, it's the only one that fits is that with TT grips, there is a really good one, which is plus eight ergonomics over the original from Mechanic 2, but unfortunately we can't get access to that straight away. And so what we can do is we can add the Hoag light grip, which is kind of a middle ground, and this is pretty much the most kitted suppressed pistol you can make at the beginning. As I said before, we'll go in and change this over to just traders, and we can see that we can get all of this stuff from Mechanic 1 for these two, Barrel from Prapor, and then we can buy the pistol and suppressor from Prapor as well. So excluding the magazine for the moment, this is 35,000 rubles for a suppressed pistol, which is pretty cheap actually. It's not that bad. It's not the most functional weapon of all time because the ammo is not that great, so you're going to have to hit them in the head really, and I would use it for hunting scavs, maybe PMCs if you're a good shot using the laser, or you're good at just using hip fire, point fire. I would advise mostly trying to use it to kill scavs, but it does mean that you're going to be nice and quiet and not attract attention from other PMCs. The next weapon that we have is the VPO 209, and this one can be purchased from Jaeger. That does mean that you need to complete introduction first. However, this weapon is fairly decent. This is a semi-auto AK light rifle that fires 366 caliber rounds, and they do more damage than their 762 counterpart, but those that are accessible at level one have lower penetration and the best can't one-shot PMCs, which is kind of unfortunate. Personally, until you can get to the top ammo, which is APM, the weapon is outclassed by the VPO 136, simply due to the recoil difference, which is quite stark, because otherwise they're very, very similar weapons. However, if you want to go quiet, it's the only proper weapon per se that you can get access to that fits a suppressor straight away. So where do we get the suppressor from? If we go over to Skier at level one, and we go into weapons parts, we can see that we have the suppressor from him here, 28,784 rubles, which is quite expensive early on, but can be worth it if you want to be doing something more serious, longer range PMC and scav engagements, and you don't just want to go in with a TT. 
As I said, to buy the 209, you can get it from Jaeger, but you can also buy it from Skia once you've completed Stirrup, which is where you have to kill players with a pistol, which is pretty much easiest done on Factory. But that's not necessarily a quest that you can do super, super early on because it can be quite hard. Once you have one of these though, there are a few ways to mod this and it's probably the most moddable weapon that you can get at level one, alongside the other kind of AK equivalent weapons. Starting with the handguard, from Prapor 1 we can get an AK-100 handguard, which is this one. And the beauty of it is that you can get a rail underneath and also a rail on the side by using this thing, which is kind of cool. In terms of vertical foregrips, you have two choices at level 1. You have the Knight's Armament Vertical Foregrip, which adds 7 ergonomics. And then you also, and that's from Peacekeeper, you also have an RK-6, which is from Skier. This gives you 5 ergonomics, but minus 1% recoil. Personally, for me, this early on, as you can see, the vertical recoil goes from um, 194 to 191. I really don't think that this is worth it. I normally just use the Knight's Armament Vertical from Peacekeeper 1. This also means that you're spending money with Peacekeeper, which is important because all you need is money to get Peacekeeper to level 2. So if you can buy stuff from him or sell stuff to him, then it's definitely worth it. Buying stuff is usually better because normally you have a surplus of dollars and you can't use those dollars for anything else other than buying from him at the early stage. Then if you want to improve your hip fire, this is useful to add on a little laser. We have the TBL or the NC Start, which comes from Skia 1. And this is a blue laser. It's basically the cheapest one in the game. It can help you if you get jumped really, really close up while you're using this weapon, as this gun can be quite hard to use in CQB, because if people are super close, the recoil is really high and it can be difficult to control and keep on people. So adding this laser can help with that. It's up to you. We're going to put the suppressor on because that was the whole point of this video. And then finally, we have a railed cover so that you can add some kind of optic. To do this, you can buy a bastion cover from Skier. The important thing about this is that it won't install if you have the rear sight on. So you have to take the rear sight off first, so that then it will fit and then add the bastion. And what this does is this opens up really all of the optics in the game you can apply. There's only a couple that you can get at the beginning. And the one that I like for this weapon is the EKP-818 or the Cobra. And the beauty of this is that this gives minus two ergonomics to the weapon. But if you go to Prepper 1, you can get this little Cobra hood thing, which adds three back. So overall for the combo, you actually gain one ergonomics, which is kind of neat. This works on any weapon, really. That's basically as far as you can go with the weapon at this point in the Tarkov career. So if we go into our fine parts, we'll have a look at what we actually need. We didn't need the grip because we got that with the gun. Same with the stock. We got this 30 round magazine with the weapon, which we'll talk about in a second. And then we don't need the gas tube, but everything else we bought. So this is actually kind of expensive. Let's go to traders only just to make sure that we're seeing it as is rather than using the flea market. And this basically gets us to 95,000 rubles, which is quite expensive. This is not a cheap weapon early on, but it can be worth it. I, I think in terms of prioritization, personally, it's both the optic and the suppressor first, depending on what you want to do. I really think the optic is very, very, very important. I find the irons quite hard to use on these weapons, especially with the high recoil. And then the handguard section, this is really optional with the laser and the vertical foregrip and the AK-100 handguard because it doesn't do that much except obviously the laser being quite important but if you think you can get away without using it then that's definitely an option. Now in terms of magazines you do get a 30 rounder with the gun which is quite useful but at the beginning you can't buy 30 rounders outright and one thing to note if we were to take this off is that you actually gain four ergonomics so this magazine removes four ergo. There is one way to get a 30 rounder at the beginning which is over on Prapor level one and it's a barter it's this one here and that is for a pair of yellow handled pliers but i don't think this is really worth it alternatively the option that you can get from skier one if we go through to magazines on him and there's two that you can buy the 76239 magazine for 10 rounders this also fits 366 so don't worry they will go in same thing with the long version but the short version although it's very very fast to sort of check speed modifier don't think this is really worth it what you could do with the long one they're really cheap they're actually even cheaper than the short one this gives you plus seven ergonomics so compared to the long 30 rounders with minus four these give you a swing of 11 ergo which is really not to be sniffed at this is actually quite decent with the 209 being a semi-auto weapon, normally you won't need more than just your 30 rounder. These are just in case. So they go in your rig, you bring two of them and you fill them with 10 rounds of EKO or whatever ammo it is that you decided to use. And you can use these as a backup just in case you get forced to switch when you're in close combat. Once you've used them, fill back up your 30 and put that back in the gun. So these are just there in case. The final weapon I want to talk about is also from Jaeger. So if we go back into weapons here, it is the VPO215, which is really actually quite a fun weapon, despite me not liking bolt actions all that much. But this is kind of cool. And it also takes the same suppressor as the 209, because this is another 366 weapon. So once we've added the suppressor, 
There's really not much else that you can actually do with this gun. There's no modifications to be made, but handily it comes with a Picatinny rail already inbuilt when you purchase the weapon, again allowing you to add any optic that you might want. Now the usual pairing for this is the UTG 25mm rings and then inside that is the Pilad 4x32. This is normally the setup that people use right at the beginning of the game because all of these are accessible from Jaeger 1 and it allows you to shoot over a slightly longer range. This is not a good scope by any means but given it's really the only one that you have access to a lot of the time you don't really have a great deal of choice. So we don't need to buy some of these things like the rail, but everything else we can buy and these are very cheap, 1000. So this is going to cost you 64k to go and suppress this weapon by a suppressed sniper rifle early on at level 1, which honestly isn't that bad. These are really useful for completing scav quests where you're having to shoot over long range. The beauty of the 215 is that because it is a bolt action, it counts as a sniper, which is really important for completing the Tarkov shooter quest line and for getting your sniper skill up in general in Escape from Tarkov because some of the later quests require you to have quite high sniper skill so it's useful to get points into that early. In my opinion the best way to run it early is with EKO rounds as these are the fastest bullet for the 215 and they also have the highest penetration accessible at level 1 and they work with the zeroing of the weapon which you can find out a little bit more in this video. It continues to be useful later into the wipe too as you unlock APM ammo and I've used this to great effect both in the Tarkov shooter questline as well as being one of the absolute cheapest kits that you can run to kill rogues on Lighthouse for example. APM ammunition gets a bad rap for its accuracy as the debuff of minus 28% scares people off. However, as it's a percentage on the MOA stat, it really isn't as bad as people make out as long as you're not shooting over 300 meters. I've just put out a guide on completing Tarkov Shooter 3 before this video, so go and watch that next as you can finish it super early compared to any prior patch before 12, 12, 30, because you can get a small stack of APM very early on in the progression. So go and watch that. But as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons. Hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video. And as always, have fun in your raids.